So basically I'm turning this thing into a two part. This will now be the second part. We're talking on simulation through the conversation of virtual reality. And the question is, can we create a virtual reality that is so real and so alive that it becomes a new reality that we get so lost in that reality that we lose the current one that we're in now and I, it, like i'm trying to get my words right so yeah no, you, that's said, right. you just said it really well that's that's a good way to say it, it okay okay cool because I, I don't want to be butchering this because this is such no, a crazy good. awesome topic so you said that elon musk made the statement that the chances that we are not in a simulation right now are one to billions one in billions yeah okay so you said that we could take virtual reality so far that say now we did that ancestral creation like went back to the 1800s and then in in that virtual reality of the 1800s someone creates virtual reality in that space and that and then takes it from there further right so virtual yeah. reality would have to be so advanced that you could be in a virtual reality and create something to that extent it would yes. have to be like super forward yeah 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 but we're not that far away from that because of exponential because again, growth because again really really exactly exactly i'm learning on this bro. podcast you got it bro you got it that's it that's it and it's it's one of those concepts that just it's not hardwired into us because when we were evolving we had no need to think about exponential growth because there was nothing that was doing that really yes you know so in our, at least in our environments. So we're now in this whole new world where it's like, again, this is a theory, but it's like, when you follow the logic, there's like, there's something to that. You know, it's really, it's just an interesting thing. And, and again, under, yeah, understanding technology, like you watch these growth curves and these things, like the freaking iPhone, I mean, just alone, that thing, the invention of that, if you watch the movie Minority Report, right? Would you remember that with uh, Tom Cruise? Yes, yes. Yeah, so that movie came out in 2005. That's two years before the iPhone was invented, right? Yes. That, you with me? So yes. in that movie, the way that Spielberg did that movie is he had a, a think tank of all of the most brilliant minds in future projections, like VR experts, uh, technology experts, just from all over the world come together and they thought about what the future was going to look like, right? That's they did dope. incredible stuff. Like they had self-driving cars, they had digital advertising, they had all of these things that were so advanced and so cutting edge and so cool. But if you look at their phones, they're still communicating with these little like Bluetooth headset looking type of things. And they had nowhere near anything as advanced as what we have in our pockets right now that only came out two years later. This, That's you know, crazy. Like, it's crazy. It's just one of those things I always look at. And I'm like, that was the smartest minds in the world at that time. It didn't really see this thing that was just coming. And it's like, yes. what are we two years away from right now? It's scary. It's, it's unknown. And like as humans, we have a you know a, a natural propensity to fear the unknown. To but fear the unknown, I like yeah. yeah I, I mean, listen again. Going back to the fundamentals, though, these are tools, right? And it all matters how we use these tools. Like a hammer yes. can build a bridge, or it can bash someone in the head. You know what I mean? It's how you use these tools, and that's why exactly. the power and being conscious of the power that we have with these tools and in storytelling and all the things that we're doing is so so important. So you, you brought up Minority Report, um, which is with Tom Cruise. Have yep. you seen Vanilla Sky? Yes, yes. That movie tripped me out yeah. so badly. <laughs> For sure. I, yeah. I, I had to lie in bed and Google the ending, and I found like four different theories on the ending, and I was able to yeah. like mix everything and come up with my own crazy theory, which is what we do, yeah. is try to define understanding. For sure. And that, that, that was a thing of like putting your body on ice, but you're still alive in your head. It's kind of like the same ending to Repo Men. Did you ever watch that like really gory movie, Repo Men? Oh, yeah. Was that with it, Emilio Estevez? It's got uh, Jude Law, I think was. No, not. Is it Jude Law that's in it? Where you get like a fake heart and they cut you open. They got to take, they got to repo your heart back if you can't pay for it. Maybe they did a remake of it. I, I, oh, I mean, no, I'm thinking of something. Anyway, anyway I, yeah, yeah. Anyway. What, what about it? Yeah. Yeah, so in that, at the end, they basically uh, kill the dude and repo a bunch of spoilers. They like, you know, repo a bunch of stuff from him and his chickie at the time, or like his, his girlfriend, like hookup vibe, you know. And they put him 
in his dream scenario by putting these things in his head and his conscience continues to live in this dream. Now, right. the reason I bring this up is because could we do that? Like, could virtual reality become so real that it becomes like that Johnny Depp type shit in that movie where he lives in a computer? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Transcendent. So, yes. yes. So, okay, the, the answer is, is yes, absolutely. And there's even the, so the person that started Sirius Satellite Radio, yeah, you know, yeah, they, they're now working on that. That's their next mission is to upload human consciousness to a silicone chip. Yeah. How? Yeah. See, I, I can't fathom that. <laughs> Such crazy. Yeah. What were you saying? I I can't fathom that. Like like I'm going. I'm still trying to understand like emotions, right? This is why I love, or one of the reasons why I love acting and storytelling. We to this day, like my phone. There's so much happening in this little thing. But I, I, I can work it. There's so much happening in your brain and emotions and the things you feel and the things that trigger you and push you in certain directions. But it's not tangible. I can't, I can't hold an emotion and go, that's anger. This is how I can tweak it and make it better and move it around. And so how are you going to do that with my conscience? Well, I don't know if it's like necessarily so far as to tweak it and move it around because we don't even necessarily understand what consciousness is really uh, or even where it ne technically it's located. Uh, that being said, I don't quite understand. Like, uh, it's a, it's a, I think it's the, the person that started serious is a, was a, is a man that transitioned to a woman. So I believe is a, a woman now. Uh, and she gives a great Ted talk about it. So like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to try and put work cause that's not my field of expertise at all. I've yeah. just heard that that's what, that's what they're working on. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, the Elon Musk thing, you brought up the neural link, the one with the stuff in the brain, like yes. that's 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 definitely along those lines and that's you know i i don't not that that's the first goal of it because the first goal of it would be you know human to computer interface but that's not far from it when you start really following where those threads can lead so, <laughs> yeah. that's so crazy so basically yeah. basically virtual reality and your conscience in a chip and Neuralink and all of the stuff could go so far that we lose the necessity for the world around us and recreate it. For sure. I mean, think about even what's happening with Instagram. I mean, most kids are spending so much time scrolling through Instagram that it's like their reality is a lot more on Instagram than in reality. Yeah. You know, if you're a kid and you spend 12 hours of your day on Instagram, eight hours sleeping. That means what is the, you know that 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 leaves four more hours for you to actually experience reality. And listen, that's obviously an extreme case, but oh man, I, we, there's a, we can go even a little deeper if you want. There, there's there's a there's a game. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's called a Second Life. It's a yeah. it's a virtual game. It's a virtual. So it was on a computer. It's like a virtual game on a computer where you create a character, and in that world, you can do whatever you want. You can interact with other avatars on the computer, real people all over the world, but you create family and a house and make money and do whatever whatever you want to do. You, you make your own world. It's called Second Life. A few years ago, there was a couple, I believe it was in South Korea, and they were so into this game, they spent so much time on the game that they had created a whole family, like their own, their own partnership. The man and the woman were on this game, living as a couple, in the game and in real life and in real life they had a baby and in the game they also tried to create their real life so they had a baby in the game and they neglected their real baby so much because they were paying attention to the virtual baby that their real baby died <laughs> i'm not i'm not laughing about that i'm laughing about like your reaction to it it's kind of amazing but that's real there's like there's actually a documentary about it i think it was called love child um it's just it's crazy, but I'm saying that's already now. That's nothing to do with virtual reality. That's like that's just how much time we can spend and how much of our day, you know, waking life that we would put into living inside of a virtual game on a computer. So think about when it feels completely real. This is so scary to me. So not not only could you create the perfect world, uh, perfect, yeah, yeah, yep. whatever yep. perfect is to each person, but not yep. only could you create the perfect world, but you could create a world 
where death wouldn't exist. Until the point that your that your actual body passed. But if there's also the chance that you can put your consciousness into a chip, then technically you could live forever. Yeah. <laughs> Simply put, yeah. So if wait, I think I want to roll here. So if hang on. I'm trying to around my head about two different things. So if you mentioned the an ancestry theory where you could create the 1800s and go back to the 1800s and then yep. and then and then recreate like virtual reality in the 1800s and then kind of rebuild in that virtual reality from that point in time. Yep. Say now we do that. Combine that with putting your consciousness into a chip. Yep. You'd live forever. Yep. <laughs> My word. Yep. Yeah. Is it is it far to go to bring up time travel? Would that not be? No, it would, it be, would be some form. No, it will. It would be. Uh, you're, you're not talking about necessarily real time travel. You're talking. It's like it'd be time travel in the same sense that when you restart a video game to the beginning, you time travel. Well, if 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 we're on the point of. If, if I could lose myself in a reality, in a virtual reality to the point that that virtual reality becomes my reality, then I could time travel. Because to me, if this is all a simulation, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I now, get what you're saying. Yes. The, yeah, you yeah, see, yeah. What I'm, you oh, see how yeah, everything connects? Yeah. If you're talking about that, no limits. You could fly. You could breathe underwater. You could do whatever. There are, if it's that, the, the, there's no, no limits. So you could trick my brain that if you created a virtual reality where I could breathe underwater, my brain could get tricked to such a point that I live in that virtual reality believing that I can breathe underwater. So that becomes my reality. I become Aquaman. Yes. yes. I Dope. mean, it hasn't been done yet, but yes, is the answer. Hmm? <laughs> You're in Homadeus. Homadeus? What's that? Hmm. What? There's a book called Homadeus. 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 Yeah. What's that? Hariri. Yeah. Hariri. It's awesome. Must read it. Yaval. Har yeah, he's read it. Yeah. yeah. He's read it. This is exactly. Yeah. So, so the, the guy wrote Sapiens. What were? Oh, you? Sapiens. That's what. Um, yeah. Yeah. I bought the other book. Yeah. Just, so the yeah. guy who wrote Sapiens. Sapiens was about our history in the past. Homo yes. Homo Deus or Homo Deus. I don't know exactly how to say it, but Homo Deus is the projected future that he's done it's, it's like if, if if that's the past homo deus is the future if sapiens is the past yeah yeah it's it's heavy it's 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 very it's very worth checking out and it's 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 actually scary to have this conversation because it sounds like a conversation that is extremely far-fetched but the impact that technology is having on the world and in our individual lives more and more and more and like it's not that crazy to have this conversation anymore the yeah. fact that you can virtually create time travel to such a Sorry. point that I time travel. That you believe it, yeah. That you believe it means there's no need for you to create a time capsule like Back to the Future and send me away in like a, a car because you could just convince my brain that I've done it already and I'm in that time. There's that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. L listen, again, I mean, to me, the, the thing that I keep, when, when, when you, we go off into all, all these potential possibilities that are very possible, it's always important to come back to that all we're talking about is tools. We are yes. talking about tools that we are building. And again, what do you want to do with these tools? See, now, for me, I can't imagine how we could take that tool and make it bad. I'm sure there oh, is a way. For sure, bro. Yeah. <laughs> imagine that. Imagine, imagine if you had control over. Okay, talk. Okay, all right. Hypothetical. If some government wanted to control an entire population, plug them into VR headsets, let them be all vegetated out doing in their virtual time travel, and then the government does whatever the freaking fudge they want. 
if it was some evil government. I'm just saying, like that's yeah, just I'm one sure. of in, yeah, yeah. They're, 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 they're so listen. All of these tools can can be can be used in any direction, and the more powerful the tool, the more possible like that is for for both sides of that. You know, it's like you know, splitting the atom creates nuclear energy and creates an atomic bomb. So, fair. So now you know how in a cell phone they believe that the government's listening, or they believe yeah. that or whatever it is. You know, like. Yeah. Jess and I will talk about the fact that I need to buy a purple fire extinguisher. That sounds crazy. Until yeah. I go on my Shop phone and the first sponsored ad on my Instagram is fire extinguishers that you can customize. Like, yes. it's crazy. That happens all the time. And then yeah, I ask yeah. other people that I do exactly the same thing happened to me. But what's even crazier is that we don't care. So we talk about it going like, oh my word, dude. So... You know, I spoke about this and this and this, and the next day there was an ad of it in my Instagram. You don't actively go get rid of the phone. You go, ah, well, I guess that's what it is. Yeah. Now you want to now now you want to plug in, yeah, a virtual reality and a neural link that has full like control over yeah. the uh, perspective that your brain has, and you want to give someone the chance that they could possibly control that. Like, so if, if I put on a virtual reality headset and it's so good in the future that I put it on and while I'm in this world, I get convinced that I need to buy whatever product. Yeah. You could convince my brain to such a point that when I take that headset off, I live with the need to buy Easy. the product. Easy. Or not, dude, take it further. You could convince them to do pretty much whatever. And it's like at that, that point, then it, then it becomes inception. You know what I mean? You're implanting ideas in someone else's brain. So oh, it's it's, inception. It, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, neg the negative you know, potential is, is extraordinarily great as well. That's why it's so important to pay attention because to you how could, you use it. You could convince assassinations. For sure. You Did you ever see the could... Manchurian Candidate? The Manchurian Candidate, that's like pretty much the, the plot. I haven't seen that, but I'm going to watch it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Dude, that's... It's like, I mean, they, they do something different. It's not really exactly through the same technology, but it's it's same thing. They, they convince the guy to assassinate the president. Like, and then, anyway, yeah. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> dude, listen, I, so I, I, dude, I, have, I have to go because I didn't, I didn't expect us to go this long, but I fucking love I didn't love either. This, man. I didn't I, either. I, I, I appreciate you, and I'm down to do this again anytime. So we can, yes. we can do a part two, and we can continue this because the – Stuff runs deep, and I love exploring ideas with you and just kind of, you know, talking about awesome. the space because it's it's unknown. You know what I mean? It's and so we sick. are at that point now where we get to kind of create this, or, or at least be part of that, and bringing this stuff into the world and paying attention to the stories we're telling and all yes. these things we're doing. It contributes to to this world that we all hopefully want to create. But that's again the thing: be be willing to understand and to listen and to empathize and conversations like this suddenly become very interesting because it's not me versus you. It's the two of us sitting down and talking about something that whether it happens tomorrow or in 400 years, yeah. there's, there's a very high chance of like and, and, and possibility. And it's great to talk at, on a, on a level of understanding that is like, dude, you know, stuff that I don't, I'm learning every single yeah. podcast that I ever do. I learn something. And this has definitely been one of those top podcasts when it comes to value of knowledge. So That's thank awesome. you, Elijah. Thank you so much for giving me your time. You gave me a lot of your time today. Um, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Once again, congratulations on your Emmy nomination. I have to bring it up again. Um, Thanks, man. And I am so stoked for what's coming. And we will definitely do this again. We'll stay in close touch as well. Um, yeah. And I will see you on that side of the world very soon. Dude, I love that. Let, let's do it anytime, man. Great talking with you, Josh. Awesome, dude. Same to you. Thank you so Cheers. much, Elijah. Much love, right man. Much love, man. Talk to you soon. Cheers, cheers, brother. Peace.